Ooh, these eyebrows, child. Mm. Why does Kim have an assistant? And why does Kim have a fashion dis? And why is Dolce and Gabbana sending Kim anything? What? Where they do that at? I feel like her boobs grow by the episode, and I really didn't like any of the dresses that she had on. I mean, I just feel like I'm distracted. I think if her boobs were smaller, maybe I would like them, but I can't. I can't get into them because I can't get in into anything that she wears because I feel as though her breasts are taking over, and she's such a white girl. Like, <laughs> like she is the stereotypical white girl with that be with the black girls all the time. Like, <laughs> and that really just gets under my skin a little bit because it's like everything that she does like her little side jokes about you know i'm gonna snatch this hair off and y'all gonna poke your hairs in here yeah you know she's really insecure about her hair so she was like if i get it first then they won't harp on the fact that i wear these uh ro j party wigs i'm very interested to see if candy's mom is going to uh fold bend compromise i don't know how to say it um i doubt she will um, let me just say that Candy, her curls weren't crunchy this episode, so I can't really shade her for that. But um, I really, 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 my heart went out to Candy. Um, and because I don't know about anybody else, but I am a black woman with a black mother. So I have soap in there where you are crying and all emotional and all the tears of your mother is looking at you like this. completely unfazed like unmoved um by anything that you have to say <laughs> um, oh um i understand where you are torn um between and you, i understand the the uh challenge of having an a, a difference in opinion with your mom and um being torn because you don't want to disrespect her you want to please her but at the very same time, it's your life, your decision that's at stake. So that whole thing really um, got to me. And I got quite emotional on the elliptical today. I didn't cry, but it was just like that. Like when black moms have made up their mind, there's not much that anybody could do to change it. Um, and my mother is like candies in that the worst is always, you know, assumed to be what's going to happen like the worst is always assumed to be inevitable um and i understand where candy's mother is coming from because it is a cause of concern that old boy has four baby mothers and it is a cause of concern that what these kids and how these kids were raised is definitely going to impact riley so i understand that whole dynamic but at the same time candy says she's happy um yeah, I think that it sucks. And I feel bad for her. When shout out to, to Candy's um aunts and uncles, especially when um Bertha said that, you know, everybody's hoping for the best. But if not, you know, Aunt Pearl, Aunt Penny, Nuck Nuck, Bebo, Doo Wop and, and and them will be there to pick up the pieces. Now if that we are a family like a giant tree uh, branching up towards the sky. Like that just was just like see that's that's what we that's that's why I need me a black family. Okay? That's why I'm so grateful for the one that I got because no everybody's not gonna do what they supposed to do technically. And you know, but you gotta jump out on faith and you have to like, you know, follow your heart in certain things. And if not, then your family is the one who's gonna be there to pick up the pieces. It's just like, yes, Aunt T, whoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do y'all think that Lisa's gonna get pregnant like quick, fast, and in a hurry? Or is this gonna take like some time? I wonder. Uh anybody who feels like Ed should have this baby, send me an email. I don't get a petition over to Bravo. Um Uh-huh. Rose petals. Oh, this is what I was gonna say. Lisa, it was really cute, but I don't know. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> Might be why I'm by myself. Because. I'm always like. I don't think like the average girl thinks. Like. Uh, like she came in the house. It's all, all the rose petals and all this. This to die on the, on the <laughs> ground. Or whatever. The table. The candles. All of that. Uh, and she was. Oh my god. It's all my, oh my god. Well maybe because it's never happened to me. 
But my first inkling, like my first thought, honest to God, like, and I'm really not trying to be funny or anything. My first thought, and I really feel like if it was to happen when my husband does these type of things for me, my first inclination would be, so who's going to clean all this up? Why you be, <laughs> why you, I understand you're trying to be all romantical and things of that nature, but honey. <laughs> all right, now on to the nitty gritty. In the Nene, Kim, and Sheree saga. Now, last week I said that I was proud of Sheree for bouncing back after her difficulties uh, with her husband. And I still stand behind that. But, this week, Sheree reminded me of the reason why I didn't like her. Like, last week it was kind of like, oh, Sheree might be okay. But now, I see, I remember, it all came back to my remembrance as to why she gets on my nerves. Sheree is an instigator and like Kim said, she's an opportunist. And she sees this whole beef as a means of her to remain relevant in the show. So she keeps fanning the fire. And it gets on my on my nerves. Like, I enjoyed how Kim and, ne and Nene reconciled their differences. And that was really cute. I thought it was quite big of Nene. Um, but, you know, I don't really trust Sheree. She looked good in them leather pants. And shouts out to Bravo for acknowledging the thick girl. <laughs> Um, and it was good to see Sheree had a little shape on her because I don't know, it's no shade intended, but to me, Sheree doesn't really have the softest and most feminine of faces. So to see that she's got a little body on her, that kind of warmed the cockles of my heart. It was like, all right, Sheree, I see you. I think Sheree's friend Tanya is, is, uh, like the Tomb Raider or something on the law. Like, I think that she could be Lara Croft like a black Lara Croft. If Lara Croft was black and had a short haircut, it would be Sheree's friend Tanya. Like, I think she's great. I enjoy her little, you know, I'm every woman. I shoot with big guns. Bang, bang. I, I see that for her. But I don't like the fact that Sheree, yeah, Sheree's the last person who needs a gun as far as I'm concerned. Because she's fickle and she's dramatic and she has two small children. So I don't really, I don't appreciate the guns in the house. Um, yeah. And I don't think that Sheree needs a gun because Sheree is dramatic. And I could just see her going to get that gun. Like, and you know what? And blah, 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 shooting her mother or something. Like, God forbid. But like, just because, you know, just her personality, she doesn't need a gun. I didn't really think that necessary. Sidebar, I think that I'm going to start doing my um, workout in conjunction with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because because I was so enthralled into what was going on on the television, I did 60 minutes of cardio today. Which was just like, I didn't know that I had it in me. So, I think that I might be, you know, uh, getting ready to plan my workouts around television programs. Just a thought. But yeah, I'm interested to see if, uh, if Sheree and, and um, Kim are really going to like throw hands. And I'm interested to see, you know, how it's all going to pan out. So let's get back up the next episode three and let's discuss. <laughs> 